how to better complete projects successfully? And that is an important question because those who do earn more than the trust from their clients alone. My name is Jan van and in this video you learn the most important and powerful project management tool there is. It's the work breakdown structure. It's a great and valuable help to determine what must be done and to collaborate and align the work within your team and with your stakeholders. It is simple, but you must have seen a couple of them to get started. So that is exactly what we're going to do today. In previous video, you learned about the two basic needs for project success, enough people and enough time and collaboration and alignment. And you learned that the primary planning is all about that. You learned how to prepare for your planning. And right now it's time to really start with your planning with the work breakdown structure. Primary planning refines the information you got, determining detailed requirements, documenting the scope and assess how to approach the project. And that means what is it that you are going to do to create in your project team and what will you purchase? Think about it, just use your common sense. And right now you must bring your planning team together. That's not difficult, but it is a critical activity. Missing the inputs of specialists and the team who will do the work is setting up for an inadequate plan. Also their problem is that they are too busy. And they might believe that planning activities are less urgent, but they are wrong. Missing their input right now might cause that you end up with a plan that is not capable in delivering the product. Take it very seriously to get your team on board. Claim your team. A few directions. Who do you need for the planning? When do you need them and for how much time? And what do you expect from them? Make sure they're available and have enough time to devote themselves for a long enough time to get it all done. With your scope in the pocket and your planning team on board, the first major delivery is a work breakdown structure. The best way to explain what a work breakdown structure is, is to show one. This is a work breakdown structure of a house construction project. The outline of the project, the main deliverables are the foundation, external and the internal construction. And this is also called the control accounts. And it shows the products of each of these deliverables. And it shows even the lowest level, the work packages needed to create the product. A work breakdown structure is mandatory. You must create one. The work breakdown structure is anatomy of your project. It exactly tells you what will be created and the individual components from which it's built up. It is a requirement step in the planning. And you also need it as a visual support in meetings about the project with your stakeholders and with your team. I spent quite some time on it right now because it is so important. Let's take a look at the work breakdown structure of an oil or gas production platform. Something like this. Well, let's see how a work breakdown structure is constructed. On the top level, the control accounts. You see engineering, procurement, fabrication, transportation, installation, hookup and commissioning. These control accounts are set up in line with the functional departments in the organization. You might do the same if your project is also lining up with the functional departments. Well, let's go into the work packages. And to give you an idea, a jacket, that is the construction of a platform that is under sea level. Piling is how the jacket is fixed to the seafloor and the well conductor connects the platform to the oil and gas reservoir. The top side is for the accommodation of the personnel, etc. Now you're an expert on the production platform. Let's see what other alternatives there are for the work breakdown structure. This is the same platform, but it is organized differently. The control accounts are the jacket, the piling, the top sides, the well conductor and the installation and hookup. These are the main deliverables. You might choose this setup if your organization is technology based. Or you might also choose for this work breakdown structure if you have separate external supplies for each of those deliverables. What makes this work breakdown structure interesting is that it is organized in producing platforms with different levels of maturity. It starts with a feasibility study. The second level is a prototype or a proof of concept, followed by a minimal feasible platform. And that is the smallest production platform. Well, that makes sense. And finally, there is a full capacity platform. You use this if you have to develop new technologies and that the current technology is not sufficient to produce. And along those stages, you will learn much more how to create the next stage. 
or just have looked at the number of work breakdown structures, they are very high level. You can also add some more detail, like this. This work breakdown structure almost contains 200 elements, and you see that more details makes it difficult to understand. So don't make it too complex. I still have a few other examples, and I hope that by showing a couple of more examples, it will help you to create a work breakdown structure on yourself more easily. This could be a work breakdown structure for an improvement process. First, it starts with research and recommendation, and then the implementation of the approved recommendations and the evaluation. And this project is actually likely to be split up in two. First, there is a study, the research and the recommendations, and the second is the implementation and the approval. And there are two reasons why you might split it up. Suppose that the customer needs some time and takes their own time to approve the recommendation. Then you don't have control over the start of the implementation. And the second is that you might have different recommendations with a totally different cost structure or resource impact. So that means that you don't know how you will do the project from start to end. That's the second reason why you might want to split this project in two projects. Another work breakdown structure is for new product development. For example, for a medicine, some regulatory, lead generation, preclinical studies, clinical studies and submission, production facility and a product launch, the commercial part of it. And this one is for a software product that is expected to get multiple releases. This project defines the full life cycle of the operational software it creates the first release and brings it in operation, and it initiates the second release. And this is the last work breakdown structure. It's an alternative way of presenting a work breakdown structure for an incremental delivery. Your product will have five releases, and each release will cover new functionalities of the different technologies. Now you have seen a number of work breakdown structures, I have some considerations for you. When you start at the top level, when you make your work breakdown structure, questions you might ask yourself is what are the key deliverables, the key products or the components of your project? Another question might be, are the deliverables directly connected to payments? If that is the case, your control accounts might be related to the payments. So you have the focus on getting all the work done that is needed for the payment. Are the key works or the key products developed? integrated or are they increments on each other? Guidelines for creating a work breakdown structure is involve those who will be performing the work, involve technical input from subject matter experts. It's about tangible and non-tangible deliverables. A non-tangible deliverable could be a payment or it could be a decision to be made. It's about external deliverables but also internal deliverables, so deliverables that stay internal in the project, that might be integrated, or it might be an interim deliverable. Suppose that you need testing facilities, then that might be an interim deliverable, but will not be delivered to your customer. It's not about activities, and a work breakdown structure is not about work. That means that it is about nouns and adjectives, if you describe the elements of your work breakdown structure, and not about verbs. So it means a painted living instead of painting. Leave out what is obvious or part of the specialist autonomy. If it is obvious for a specialist what he needs to do, then there is no need to cover that in your work breakdown structure or in your plan. And leave out what is covered by processes. Um, I mean with that, if for example you develop software and reviewing software is part of your standard process, then there is no need to add the review task in your planning. Then it's part of the process. Your work breakdown structure defines 100% of the scope of your project and all the products and subproducts underneath. Don't try to get it right the first time. Planning is a cyclic process, so you go over it a couple of times. There's no use to get it right the first time. And discuss it with your stakeholders. Go back to them with new insights and give them the opportunity to reflect on that. In this video you learned the most important and powerful project management tool, the work breakdown structure. 
You have seen several examples. Study them carefully and share your own examples with us. It is not very difficult, but you need to master the technique and make it a habit for all your projects. It isn't difficult. In the next video, you learn more about the most difficult part of planning. Estimation. Thanks for watching. See you next time.